Welcome to Frontlines. Greetings to our viewers from across the United States and Canada, from Europe and the Middle East, Australia and South America, and of course, in Armenia and Artsakh. The crisis continues. Within the last 24 hours, Azerbaijan again attacked Armenian positions in Gehar Kunik province, and again fired on civilians in Artsakh. There are wounded and there are dead Armenian boys yet again. Meanwhile, Armenian military forces shipped out to Kazakhstan to join the CSTO in quelling popular, uprise, a popular uprising in Kazakhstan, a country whose president was all too eager to congratulate Aliyev after the 2020 war. Armenian troops in Kazakhstan, while literally at the same time border incursions and the security of Armenian and Artsakh border towns were breached yet again by Azerbaijani aggression. The ceasefire is a peculiar one indeed, the international relations being conducted and the policies being pursued in its wake are more peculiar still. Armenia will begin normalization talks with Turkey, a country that clearly supported and facilitated Azerbaijan's aggression against Artsakh and Armenia. Why are Armenia-Turkey normalization talks coming about at this stage? What makes this time different than past attempts at normalization? What are the risks? What about genocide recognition? How realistic are the purported gains? What about Artsakh? What is the Azerbaijani government's involvement and what does Azerbaijan's continued aggression mean in relation to these talks? We want to unpack some of this with you today. And with that, I'd like to ask Garo to introduce our special guest. Thank you, Karnik. Sturki Darva Arachi Hura, Doctor Vikan Hosepiana, or Polorun, Polori Garzem Zanot Ansmane, Ir Askain, Korzunevitiam, Dasna Miagner, Sharunak, Yeshemuzer Shat, Mara Masen, Antratarnal Ir Gensakutian, Sagan Nevazakun, Guze Marda Hydeville, Ir Usum Nagan Ansiali, Agir Korzunevitiam Masin, a white major Semant Lerenov. Uh, our guest is uh, our maiden guest for this year. Uh, Happy New Year and uh, Merry Armenian Christmas for everyone. Uh, I do hope that we have a, a safe, prosperous, and um, a productive year for our homeland and for each and every one of us. Our guest, Dr. Viken Hosepian, needs no introduction for those who follow uh, all things Armenian. Uh, he has been uh, on the forefront uh, of service to the nation for decades. Uh, by way of his educational background, he has a bachelor's degree from UCLA in political science. He uh, holds a master's degree as well as a PhD from University of Southern California, USC. And his uh, dissertation on, uh, of his PhD was on uh, US foreign policy formulation and decision making. Uh, we all know, those of us who follow Armenia and all things Armenia, uh, that Dr. Vikan Hosepian was uh, very visible and rather prominent uh, during the last round of Armenia-Turkey protocols, which came to be known, and he was very vocal in his objections to those protocols. Uh, in fact, I recall he met several times with uh, then President Serge Sarkisyan and Foreign Minister uh, Nalbandian on the very matter. Uh, so we look forward to a very lively discussion, uh, and uh, I want to personally thank you, uh, dear Viken, uh, for accepting our, our invitation. Pariye uh, Gazes, Karnik, let's run with it. All right. Thank you, Garo. And welcome, Viken. Um, I want to start with uh, the fact that this is clearly the weakest position that Armenia has been in since it gained independence in 91. In fact, while normalization talks are scheduled to begin within a couple of days, as I mentioned in the, in, in the opening, Azerbaijan has again attacked Armenia and Artsakh, wounding and killing Armenian servicemen. I guess my question to kind of kick off our talks today are why are these talks taking place now between Armenia and Turkey? And what, if anything, can be gained from these, these discussions for Armenia 
when it is abundantly clear that Azerbaijan and Turkish aggression is simply not over and where we may not even have the upper hand? Well, uh, guys, first of all, thank you very much for having me on. This is truly an honor and a great opportunity. And thank you um, so for having me. But also, I think it's uh, us Armenians like to wish each other a um, happy new year, uh, probably a uh, whole month of January. And uh, a lot of us are celebrating at least uh, the first half of the month, even though uh, in the present environment, there's uh, not much to celebrate. Um, and Garo, uh, I wish you uh, health because I know uh, you went through a bout of uh, COVID. I don't know if you wanted me to. Um, no, I'm uh, okay. Yes, thank you. I appreciate it. Yeah, uh, and but I see you're doing uh, fine and well. Uh, so uh, to the question, Karnik, it's all a matter of context. Uh, you know. Uh, why now? Probably because the brokers, in this case, uh, the United States and Russia, mm -hmm. uh, have decided that this is a good time uh, to have such rapprochements. I say it's a matter of context because it largely depends on who's looking for what in this. Uh, what I mean by it is that a lot of times negotiations are perceived as seeking an end uh, in and of themselves, a result, so to speak. In this case, you also have to look at the process. So the two sides, i.e. Turkey and Armenia, may be looking just for the process and not necessarily focused on an end result. Even though in this case, it seems to me that uh, from the proclamations at least, Armenia is more eager for an end result, i.e. the opening of borders, whereas Turkey, I feel, is more interested in the process itself. So why now? Because the brokers see an opportunity uh, and each one of them, of course, have uh, their own interests in mind, Russia its own and uh, Armenia, its, uh, I mean, United States its own. Uh, and we can go, uh, more detailed on each one of these interests, if you'd like, but uh, obviously they're not pursuing these normalization talks uh, just for Armenia's benefit or even Turkey's benefit. Well, you know, I mean, it begs the question. I think in Sahmanera Panala, Vorun Optine, Ayastani Optine, Turkiai Optine, Rusastani Optine, Miatial Nero Optine. I mean, you know. Karo, Yenta Trutuna Daina was Sahmanera Bidi Patsvi. Ashush Aide Svatza, Yev Aisbarakain, Terusastana, Te Amerigan, Amerigan Yasalna, Mera, Yrenkin and Shaheruni. Ima Ashush Urish Hantire, the guards them, Betke or Hosi, Menk or West Hayer, whatever you, uh, you want to say, we are not objective analysts in this. We are Armenians after all, we are nationalists, we are patriots. And we have certain interests tied to all these um, aspects of us. Uh, I'm and gonna, and we gonna, need to look I'm at it. Interrupt you. Forgive me, Vikan. I'm going yeah. to ask you something, and then I'm going to turn it over to Carney. Okay, we're not objective, but you know what? Let's try and be objective. We can be objective. Sure, sure. Objective. So let's, let's talk about this. Uh, opening borders of a country of 3 million population uh, uh, you know, the doors are open to 80, 90 million people. Right. Who's going to benefit from it? I mean, some might say that 3 million people are going to have an economic, you know, boost. Others might say, like me, you're going to have, you know, millions of people flooding and I'm going to have a Palestine on my hands where all of a sudden, you know, my very people in my own homeland are going to be really homeless. Am I wrong? I don't know. No, you're not wrong. And, and our objections... Uh, throughout the years has been just that. Because anyone, I, I know uh, Prime Minister Pashinyan is announcing that uh, this is the best thing for Armenia's economy and so on. And I'm not gonna debate the fact that um, opening of borders in and of themselves may have some benefits. But in this case, uh, I think the pitfalls are a lot uh, heavier 
than the benefits. And what I mean by this, anybody that proclaims that this is going to be a boom for Armenia's economy must at least be very naive. Because when you're comparing uh, two countries, in this case, as you suggested, Armenia with 3 million population and not a very mature economy, uh, and you're comparing it to Turkey with a subsidized uh, ag agricultural sector that even the Europeans are afraid of. That's why they don't want to uh, include the Turks in their community. Uh, and now th these two are going to be competing, so to speak, because we all know that uh, any economic competition in this case is going to be in Turkey's favor. Yep. And so, yes, uh, Turkish uh, mayors on the borders are very really excited that they're going to have uh, trade and uh, commerce and so on. Armenians are excited, some of them at least. But by and large, this is going to be very detrimental to Armenia's agriculture, to villagers, and also to uh, any form of industry and production. Because if you know anything about economies of scale, you know that if a Turkish company is producing anything for that matter, for uh, a market of 80 million, uh, their costs are gonna be way less than an Armenian company or an Armenian factory that's producing goods for a market of 3 million. So here, uh, you have something which can be not only detrimental, but it can have long-term effects because what you're doing in the process is not just taking away opportunities from the Armenian producers, but also uh, killing them uh, because what's gonna happen is some Armenian factories, some Armenian businessmen are gonna shut down basically. Uh, and this is gonna be long-term. It's not gonna be just uh, you know, short while. And this is something uh, we debated with President Sarkisian uh, in the last rounds, uh, uh, especially in 2009, where we suggested that um, there is no competition in this case. The competition is won by Turkey even, even before the game starts. So, so uh, yes, you are right. And I don't see a true economic interest I do see the border opening and some benefits there, but I think uh, they, they're dwarfed uh, in relation to uh, the detriments that are awaiting us. And if we, can, if we can dig in a little bit to the detriments, because um, the, it, it seems that if we compare to the, the previous round during um, uh, uh, Sagistian's uh, presidency, um, we were in a very different geopolitical situation. Um, so I understand the economic discussions, right? And it's, it's, uh, there are macro and micro issues to be discussed there. But I want you to talk to a little bit about some of the costs that are non-economic, right? I mean, when, when the war began, uh, the prime minister had mentioned that this is an existential war. Um, the aftermath of an existential war where we did not prevail um, means that there are some existential consequences the timing here concerns me, obviously, because there are hidden costs here, uh, perhaps hidden, perhaps not so hidden. You know, what, what are some of those costs that, that we should be thinking about um, and, and, and how do you assess those? So before talking about costs, Tarni, let's also compare, let's say 2008, 2009 to what we have now. Uh, first similarities, similarities are both leaders uh, and both leading uh, regimes, entities, back in 2009 and also now in 2022, uh, are in a very weak uh, space. Back then, uh, President Sarkisian had come to power after having March 1st uh, and um, some serious internal discord and uh, a lot of international pressure. Now, what Sarkisian found was an opportunity 
to deflect, to get closer to the West by starting these talks, uh, which were later known as the protocols, the Zurich protocols. Uh, and he succeeded in many ways, because if you recall, even Levon der Bedrosian, who led the opposition back then, came out and announced that he's basically deactivating his efforts uh, in order not to complicate matters for Sarkisian while he was in talks with Turkey. Uh, so then uh, Sarkisian succeeded. In this instance, it seems to me, and details are very scarce, but it seems to me that uh, Prime Minister Pashinyan is under a lot of pressure to start these talks. And these pressures, like I said, are coming from two ends. First of all, Russia, which holds a lot of uh, power at this point and leverage uh, over Armenia, but also the West. And it wouldn't surprise me that the carrot that's dangled in front of Armenia in terms of aid from the uh, Europeans and so on is very much conditioned upon Armenia starting talks with Turkey. Uh, and the US of course has another interest tied to all of this. They would like Armenia's dependence on Iran and the Iranian border to subside, especially now that they are in the process of pressuring Iran into talks with the West, specifically with the US. Uh, so it is uh, a given that the United States is very much interested in having a normalization come about. Uh, you know, but go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. What I want to say is you, you make very, very uh, vivid showing of the likely motivations of A, back in uh, President Sarkisian's era uh, in engaging with Turkey, and now Prime Minister Pashinyan's. With, with one distinction that I see when back during the protocols, there was a visible, very loud, very sustained opposition to that kind of rhetoric with the so-called uh, uh, the, the commission of historians, you know, to discuss genocide. Whereas now, you know, all of a sudden, supposedly there's no pre preconditions, but of course we all know two sides do not talk to each other and conditions don't pop up, whether they were there vocally articulated or they were silent until they are articulated. Why is today the diaspora which was very much alive back then, dead, quite frankly, unless, unless I am completely blind. Why is the diaspora uh, silent? What is going on? And how are we gonna turn uh, the corner and resurrect the diaspora? Now, I'm not just talking about the United States or the Western US, I'm talking about the diaspora. Well, uh, before getting to the diaspora as to why the diaspora is silent, uh, let's address the previous point you made, Daro, okay. which is uh, uh, Armenia's interest at this point, or the uh, ruling uh, party's uh, interest in promoting these talks. Listen, it's not easy uh, to be um, uh, uh, the leadership of a country which has gone through a devastating defeat but it has. I mean, we have not had such a defeat uh, in our history for the past hundred years. So, and the defeat, the Azeris and the Turks are making sure that it's a daily occurrence. Mm -hmm. Basically, we wake up every morning uh, to another nightmare. Okay? Every day, there's a few of our soldiers uh, that are killed. Uh, a, lot, a few of them, uh, kidnapped and so on and so forth in prison. So this nightmare is unending. And so I can see the leadership in Armenia thinking, if we engage in these talks, maybe the process itself will lead to some sort of end to this nightmare. I personally, I'm very skeptical 
And like you uh, were alluding to earlier, I think maybe there are no preconditions per se, but uh, uh, conditions, make no mistake, they're gonna come. Uh, now they may come on the 14th during the first round of talks, or they may come later on, but they will come. And we know already, we already know what these conditions are gonna be. And uh, I think it was Karnik who alluded to it earlier and said that um, the Turks have uh, already said that they're gonna have Azerbaijan's interests in mind mm -hmm. because last time around, it was pretty much Azerbaijan which killed the talks. Uh, I mean, uh, Sarkisyan was ready to go. Uh, and uh, uh, Parliament would have ratified if uh, Sarkisian insisted upon it. But it was the Turks who couldn't sustain the Azeri pressure. And so they just uh, uh, stopped uh, talking and, and uh, the protocols were dead at that point. Of course, Armenia nullified it uh, later on, nullified its uh, acquiescence or its signature later on in 2018. But, uh, you know, for all practical purposes, uh, the talks were dead uh, within a year. So as to the diaspora, why is the diaspora silent? Listen, uh, I think the biggest mistake we make is assuming that noise is necessarily the only way that people uh, object to something. Uh, I think what... Pashinyan and the ruling party in Armenia should really be worried about is the silence more than uh, the noise of a few people here and there in either way. Because the silence could also be a sign of alienation, uh, something that's been happening for a while now. Uh, and I think it will continue if something is not done by Pashinyan to alleviate the concerns of the diaspora. And we can also go into some of the ideas that I have that they can do in order to uh, reach out to the diaspora. Now, uh, I know, uh, or I've heard uh, through the grapevine that they're reaching out to different individuals who have been involved in previous talks, uh, mostly in Armenia, people with experience and, um, at least Rupert Opinion has, uh, from my understanding, and is asking for input and opinion and so on, however much those opinions matter at this point. Uh, but I'm not sure that the aspirant entities uh, have been uh, approached, which is problematic. Uh, last, uh, last round uh, in 2009, during the protocols, at least Sarkisian, uh, came and faced the diaspora. Of course, there was a lot of criticism, a lot of insults uh, thrown at him, uh, but at least he consulted. Now, mind you, at the time, the very uh, objectionable precondition of a historical commission was on the table. Right now, they're claiming that there are no such preconditions pertaining to genocide recognition. Uh, and so somebody somewhere may be assuming that uh, the, the diaspora is a one trick pony, they, they only care about genocide recognition. Uh, I don't think so. There are a lot of a lot more that would concern a diaspora like me. I happen to be uh, a citizen of Armenia at the same time. And I have concerns that go beyond uh, just uh, genocide recognition. But uh, there are things that uh, Pashinyan can do at least to alleviate some of the concerns that we the Aspons have. You, know, you, 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 you hit on a point, uh, Viken, that I wanted to ask you about. Um, and that is uh, uh, Garzikat, Porzi Garzikat. Um, what are your What are your views? You hinted at Rubinian reaching out to to other individuals, um, but if you were to put it, uh, you know, there's been a lot of talk about the 
the experience that the the lead negotiator from the Turkish side brings. Um, what are your thoughts on that? Uh, how 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 level is this playing field? And if the if the goal is if one of the goals is process, um, you know that will take some strategic uh, um, understanding and know how. Is, is there enough time to build that? Do we have that? What What are your thoughts? Um, uh, Karnik, I know a lot has been said, a lot has been talked about uh, um, the competence or or uh, more so the experience of the two envoys on both sides. Um, and since we we talked about making this bilingual, let me address this in Armenian and say that um, there is, uh, well, uh, uh, continuing in English and then I'll convert it to Armenian and get to it in Armenian. Uh, there is a lot of symbolism in the choice of um, envoys a lot of times in uh, political negotiations. Who your envoy is, A, would determine the importance that you're attaching to these negotiations, number one. Number two, uh, uh, you may have other concerns. Like in this case, Varchavet Pashin Yana, a Sierra team, Verchin Yerek Darvai Porzaru Tum Meren Yelaz, Avanapar Pavagan Madahoke, or Ir Panakanats Mega Lab, or Iren Head Amichagan or Engabi Meche, Borum Havadar Mutuna. Harzagan Cheir and Hamar, Evandegal Angards, Madahokich, come in there, sing, Bargama Bilichester, the V, get a Yerbek at the Pahomala. Raman Gahas Knambo, Rubinianin Zadadze, yes, Rubinianin Zano Chem, again Tatrem or Pavagan Unag Marte, Garotum Neruder Marte, Havana Parkour Sarutium Bagasuni, but Ansink Turkyogoma. The same I have heard on Shagan, he must kill it. He and Rutian. They say, Yet a Nike resume. A year good arima, Japon, Turkio Tespanerase, Yerudarima, Lipanan Tespanerase, Iteb Ir, Lipananera Jamonak, and their naive Turkio Terra, Sazi Avil Horanal, and there is Sumiagan, Rosh Ujeru. Getting on Knellov, Turkey, and Yava, and Yava, and Zaira, and Ragan, and Zorak, and Zorak, and Zorak, and Zorak, and Zorak, Washington, and Turkey, and Tespan, and Zorak, 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 and the Aspanucian Terjo. The Lavanshush, I see a second barze, Che Erdogani Amar Tespan, Manamat at Parser Bastoni, Tespan, each Bidian Er, the Aspanucian Bidian Tuner, Panaganevor, genocide denier with the Lev. But a Chekhanti, Hantira Nevor, Yotadari, a smart Washington match, Turkian Nergaz Melo, Nayev Zanote, Ampot Amerigan. Lobby, lobby, stagan ashkarin. Zanote, Amerigazi, Kakagan, Martots, Martots, Boron said, Nayev, Hai American lobby stagan, Kazmager with Tunera Garan Chavin. Rem Asur Mech, a stag message, Erdogan and Swome, a cello or they said, Niportse, Spirk, Spirkai Tun, Niportse, Hagerdal, Akabes Ameriga, Jump of the Violent. Or the Asmart Kilija, Nayev Harkavaze, Washington Yashur Shanak Merimich. Yevoreman Ait Nayev symbolism, Ice and Rutian match. Or the Gernar Inca Urish Masnaketma Katnel, Megavor Hayastani Masnakede, Michina Revelian Hantir Neru Gam, Mersavor Arevelian Hantir Neru Masnakede. I best Cherav, Kanats and Reds. Mart vor minche baske mek dar yarach Amerikai mesh tespaner. Ya khora has kaygan gaber uni. We can Turkiyo kaga kaganutuna hastak kaga kaganutune. Mishtal hastak yegaze 
որոշագի օրեն չէ իսկ հայաստանի գարավարության ներգա գարավարության քաղաքականությունը ով գրնային զիսել հանրության այ մեր հանդիսատեսերում ասել չգիտեմ եթե գիտեք ասեք ինչ է հայաստանի գարավարության քաղաքականությունը ես կխորիմ որ նախ քաղաքականություն գողնորոշվիլը շատ կարևոր է լա արցախի հարցը լա սահմանների խախտումները որ այսօր դերի ունենան որբեսի ասկային ժողովի մեջի ընդիմացի ուժերը քոն է իրենք ալ իրենց հերթին կարողանան հակարակ ծիրկորոշում եթե այդպես պիտի լինի գամ գամալ ընդիմացի ուժերը ասկային ժողովի դուրս կարողանան արտահայտվել Եվ հանությունն ալ Հայաստան, Արցախ, Սպյուրկ գողնորոշի իր հերթին լալով աճագից այս կամ այն գողնին։ Ես կդեսեմ հետևյալը։ Քաղաքականությունը հստակ չէ, ամեն օր փամը դեգադարվի, եթե ինձի մեկը այսօր ասե Հայաստանի Գարավարտյան Քաղաքականությունը ինչ է հետ 44-րյա ակտիվ բաներազմի, ես կսում չեմ դի դեր ինչ է։ Ճիշտ ես գարոպած գիտես, պետք է արցարեմ լալ շատ բաներգա որ վարչապետ Պաշինյանը գնե որում ես ամացանք չեմ եւ ադոմ օրինալ ասած եմ եւ իշառնակ եմ ասել բայց մի արցար եմ լան երբ որ հայաստանի դեդության այսօրվան գարողականությունը նկատի ունենաս եւ վիճակը որը ստեղծի բաց է իրականությունը մտա քեթի վրա Կրնալալ ասկե 1 դարի առաջ 2 դարի առաջ մասավորապար բարդութեներ առաջ այս իրականությունը չի գա հիմա գացություն մտա եւ ասկացությունը մխցավանչ մնա նայթմեր մնա ինչպես քիչ առաջ սի որ գգրկնվի գո ամեն օր գգրկնվի հիմա այս ամեն ինչի մեջ քաղաքականությունը սելու ես կգարձեմ որ երկու բան պիտի փորձի անել ինքը քեթ այդ է դավորությունս մեկը որոշ հնարք մտքն է որ ас մղցավանչը կան կարն է կամ թանթաղի քեթ թիվ մեկ որբեսի փարերա հոգեբանական ас գացութեն են դուրս կանախ երգիրը ժողովուրդը ասկը եւ երկրորդ դնդեսության նպաստը եւ դնդեսությունը ցնորք է անիմաստան է ասել որ սահմանները փանալ է դիդի նպաստը ինչ որ դնդեսության պիտի օգնել է հավանաբար այն օժանդակությունն է որ արեմուտքեն պիտի կա եւ քիչ առաջ ասի ես չեմ դասած իր որ եվրոպացիները կամ ամերիկացիները զանավ զանցերով դեր դանգլինգ սամ քերտ սելով որ մինչեւ իսկ կրնամ ասել որ ադ 2.5 միլիարդի օգնությունը որ հայաստանի խոստացված էր գրնալալ անիկա ինչ որ ցևերով գապված է նաև հայաստանի այս ընթացքին հետ այսինքն չեմ ասել որ գպայմանավորվեն ասելով որ եթե չնես ուրեմն այդ օժանդակությունը չի կար բայց կհասկացնեն որ քեզ մի ագնգալություններ կան որ աս պետք է ես ամ պետք է ես եթե երբեք մենք քեզի դիդի զորակցին օժանդակենք եւ այլը նույնալ ռուսաստանը դես ռուսաստանը թուրքիում վրա լևրեջներ գտնդրե շարունակապա եւ ադ լևրեջները շարունակական ինչպեսի փնդրդուկ մնե սպեցիալ S400 այդ անտի էրկրաֆթ միսիլներ ու բանեն ինչև քալով այս օրերս տարբեր տարբեր հարցեր եւ այլն եւ ընդունին որ վերջին մի քանի դարին Ռուսաստանը հաճողեցավ թուրքիով վրա լևրեջ ունենալ ինչ որ անցյալին հացարցակը դես չունի եւ ադիգա եղավ վերջին 3-4 տարվան ընթացքին եւ ավելի խորանալու համար ասեմ որ եթե հետեւիկ անցյալ դաստամյակներու քեթ 1045-ն այս կողմ ռուս թրքական հարաբերություններում իդի դեսնեք որ ամեն անգամ որ Թուրքիո որևէ իշխանավոր փորձած է ռուսաստանի հետ մոդենալ արևմուտքը կամ ավելի շեշտելու համար միացյալ նահանգները ինչ որ բան գազմագերված է լա բետական հարված լա մի քանի դեսնեք զորավար գեներալներ ինչ որ բան 
սարկեն։ Եվ այնիվան ինչ որ պան եղած է, որբես այդ մերցերցումը խանկարեն։ Եվ այդ մերցերցումը դելի չէ ունեցած։ Սագային ինչ ինչ պատճառներով, վերջին 3-4 տարիներուն, մինչև դրնամսել Բայդենի ընտրությունը, միացյալ նահանգները այդ կզով քիչվա ավելի այսպես փան եղած է, ռիլաքս տեղած է։ Եվ ուրեմ են այդ մերցերցումը դերի ունեցան։ Սկսա վսկի սպատ էս չորսայրներու խնդիրով, հասան մինչև Սուրյո խնդրով խորզակցություն, լիվյո արձով խորզակցություն, � գդրագանավես թեմ լար ադրբեջանի և թուրտոքայլերում արցախի կծով, ես կգարձեմ, որ պետք եղածը գրնար անել, որ գամ չթույլադրեր հարցի իսկսիլ նախ եվ առաջ պադերազմի, գամ արնվազմ ավելի առակ կանխումը այդ պադերազմի ա� ինչ-որ հասկացողություն եղավ և եղավ ինչ-որ եղավ։ Ե հիմա այս պարակային, եթե կաղաքականություն նպնդրեսում, ես կգարձեմ, որ այդի կաղաքականություն, այսիքն ինչ-որ ձևով հավասարագշրել գացությունը, � մինչև որ հաչորդող շապատները կան ավելի և ավելի մարամասջուններ դարում ես։ Եթիք են չեք կարծեր, որ այդ կաղաքականության մեջ էիջնսի բագասությունը գա։ I mean, this is what we're talking about, right? We're talking about Europeans dangling fruit, we're talking about the US dangling fruit, we're talking about Russian-Turkish relations, and I guess... My, you know, my question, and there is a question here with respect to this point, um, is, is the issue you raised in terms of, you know, seeing uh, the relationship between Russia and Turkey as to the Artsakh, uh, uh, as to Artsakh and the, and the, and the conflict uh, generally. Um, we have seen uh, some tension in the prime minister's statements and rebukes coming from Artsakh regarding uh, regarding status issues, um, what 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 do you see? Well, who are the players in terms of? Well, I mean, we know the players are. What are the players' objectives uh, with respect to in the new reality with respect to to Artsakh? What are what what is is it a is it a waiting game? Is it a maintain maintenance of the status quo? Are we going to see some progress? Are we going to see regression? You know what do you what do you see in terms of the the superpowers and their objectives today, uh, and how are they related to the Armenia uh, Turkey talks? Well, uh, let's start by saying that um, we always have to be mindful of the UN resolutions of 1993. Mm -hmm. Okay, all the major players, i.e., the superpowers, you're calling them. Uh, the great powers or whatever you want to call them are signatories to that uh, and even russia has acknowledged that artsakh falls in um, uh, within the territorial integrity of azerbaijan okay so we we have to be mindful of that and of course the united states is also a signatory i mean uh, everybody who signed that is basically acknowledging that. Now, having said that, now there is a status quo on the ground. It seems to me, and uh, I don't uh, pretend to have uh, you know, any, any sort of information to prove this, but it seems to me that uh, uh, the big powers, especially the three uh, members of uh, the MES group chairmanship, um, specifically uh, the United States, Russia, and France uh, are endorsing status quo, meaning everything remains as it is. I don't know if they're losing sleep over status 
even though I know that the United States is uh, in different uh, policy statements or whether it's uh, Blinken or whether it's uh, lesser officials have stated that the status issue remains unresolved. But uh, who's to say what they understand by uh, mentioning status? Nobody's talking about that, what status they think Artsakh should have. Uh, and so it's a big deal for us, obviously, as it should be. Uh, it's a main issue for us as Armenians, but I don't think the superpowers are losing sleep over uh, status. I, I, it seems to me, like I said, they would like to stand still at this point, status quo to be uh, preserved, uh, but just that. So what does that have to do with uh, Armenia-Turkey talks? Uh, uh, it has to do with it to the extent that Armenia now is in a weak state. Uh, Turkey, and we didn't talk about Turkey's interest in all of this. Turkey very badly needs some uh, positive PR. And when we talk about process versus end results, Turkey is mostly after process, I believe. Uh, whether the borders open up or not, uh, that's not a big deal for Turkey. Sure, there are some economic interests, but Armenia's, Armenia is such a small market. And besides, it exports a lot of its goods uh, to Armenia via Georgia nowadays. And so uh, the economic the benefits are not very many, but I think they are going to get major PR out of this as a positive actor in Europe and the rest of the world. Uh, and we know very well that Turkey is suffering from the bad PR from the past, you know, uh, five, six years of belligerence. And now uh, it, it, it is... In, uh, just look at the lira, the Turkish lira, and uh, how it's tumbling, uh, and the uh, problems they're having economically within Turkey. So uh, having these talks uh, is definitely a great process for them. And uh, like I said, they'll start the process, they'll reap the benefits of the process, and then will uh, come the conditions. And at that point, uh, I am hoping that uh, Pashinyan and the negotiators on the Armenian side uh, will have the uh, will to immediately step out if any sort of conditions come about. Uh, and uh, just going back and addressing the diaspora issue and I, what I think uh, Pashinyan should do right now, uh, let's not forget that Genocide recognition is very much part of Armenia's foreign policy. I mean, it started with Vartan Boskanyan. It was espoused by uh, Ser Sarkisyan. And uh, Pashinyan, in his proclamations, has said that uh, genocide recognition is very much part of uh, Armenia's foreign uh, uh, relations. And uh, so what Pashinyan can do is immediately form a commission, uh, double up on the efforts for genocide recognition, not necessarily bring it up with Turkey, but uh, nothing stops the Armenian state from following its own uh, foreign policy tenets. So I think what they should do is immediately appoint a commission and uh, say to Turkey, listen, we're not making this a precondition for talks with you, but it is our right and it is uh, it behooves us to follow genocide recognition and that's what we're gonna do. And so take it to the next level, genocide recognition to the next level with a competent, uh, prominent commission which can follow it uh, worldwide and through different army and lobbying entities also.
I want to talk about, um, uh, you know, I want to talk about Turkey's ambitions and what's in it for Turkey. Uh, I want to take Turkey a little bit uh, south, if you will. I want to talk about Sunik for a minute. For a minute. I mean, uh, what's going to happen to Sunik and what are the interests of Turkey? Clearly, if, if uh, Sunik, uh, you know, which we all know, you know, Karekin Nejde and, and all of his heroes fought valiantly uh, to uh, bring or keep in the fold. If Sunik is no longer part of Armenia, uh, that's a huge windfall for Turkey. It unifies all these Turkic na nations of Central Asia and whatnot. And, um, and it kind of cuts off Iran from, uh, from the equation. This is a very dangerous game. So when we talk about no preconditions, uh, there ought to be, forget Turkey for a minute, there ought to be some preconditions from Armenia. Now I understand it's very difficult to negotiate from a position of weakness. Uh, God knows, you know, uh, uh, as, as a defense lawyer, oftentimes, you know, negotiating with the government, I find myself in a position of weakness, but resolve, has to be there. And, and when we talk about resolve and we talk about Sunik and we talk about Artsakh, I cannot have a prime minister that says Artsakh is Armenia full stop. And then all of a sudden, Armenia is not the guarantor of peace in Artsakh. And I have people getting killed to this day, both in Armenia and in residential communities of Artsakh being targeted. Uh, and full circle all of this weekend, Yes, shot Urakan live or at Negi Ragan Kunulan. Suniga Aingom, Arsaka Aingom, Turkia Hayastan, Panaksutun Nere, Havasik Mekir Goredo, Yev Spurka, the old Mats Hyres Kusel Hayabo Agantash Natsutuna, Spurpa has a high dari. Yes, could present the stem when I some men Mezakuin, Sir Pakwinter Agadar Nere Mer Aski. I have a make Teragadari on of Chamber Nadus, but Gunam make Pans, Charach Carnigal, make our sum in a sea, or a Lerutuna on by Manoren, Chishapotank and our Perutian head. A Yev Yeskegarzem or Spirko One, I saw Spirko Avir Hazore can Yerpe, Spirko Kiden, I have Yerpeman Yerpeman. Arit Neredal, Shunstal, Berchabes Angus Michevor, Ojakma de Gohesia Spirk of Otkigelle, Ameninche Ir Deoni, Jamanaguni, as Gaskaz Mionena. Yes, in Charles Thomas Christem, I'm Mirda Sartuna, or Askain Vokiov do Corvaze, Gernal Lavor Yerpem and Yerpem, Arit Nerdan, Senvor Lav, or Shiragano Tun Nergan, Gasknank. I am a son of the Vazir Gire, a Yevoreman in Krapera Par, Betke Shunt Kashe, a Betke Ir Vijaga Havasaragishte, Paskanali, Vaska Dra Padagan, Sagain, Yete Mer Askain Shaher, Chumornak or I saw Mer Aski Yergu Yerort Yavavilin, Spirki Mechka, Yev Yete Mer Askain Shaher, each word several of us seem with Ankabil. At Barakain, yes, gas tak chunim vor voshne me spirka vodki gagak me. Al naev Hayastani mech khamorum ner dar pergilda. Yes, gas tak chunim adur. Bet kche ureman himag van as dar dagnevats bichag gam lerutuna amay man vor bez manayun yerevuit ersan. At bez che. I'm best for yes, Bidi Arnavazam Arachargi or Hayasan Ishanov, 
աշխանությունները, բարճապետ Հաշինյանը, չհամարեր որաս լրությունը ամբայման որեն այպ ամացայնության նշան է, գպեն անդարպերության նշան է։ Չատ առակ կրնան պուսվիլ և ասոր գողքին շատ ավելի վդանկավոր մեկ պրոսեսը դեղի գրնավուն ոչ տե ասկային խնդիրներ ուղության, այլ ոդարում ուղագի, ոդարում անիմաստով, որ ալիներիշն այսինքը, որ կիտես ինչ կալ անգամ, որ մեզի մեր գարիք ունենակ, ենք այն դեղ բիտի չլնանք այլ ես։ Ասիկը շատ վատ պան է և տնգադեմ լկված լալու սկացումը, բայց երգար չի տեղ էր այդ լկվածությունը, ամեն մարդ կովիկ ու կա և իրեն ծայնը մարդիկ գպարսրացն են, գրնալ ատ հողոցներում մեջ հողոքի ակցյաներով չնեն, և ատ հողոքի ակցյաները գրնալ այլ ձևեր, որը դեղ ես հավադացողն եմ, ասկի առաջ ալ մենք խոսած ենք ձեր այս զրակրին վրա և ասկի առաջ կրած եմ այս մասին դարիներով խոսած եմ, որ աստիս Հայաստանի գարևորակույն ռազմովրագան կործ ե ռազվավարագան կործ ընգերը սպիրկն է Հայաստանի։ Եվ սպիրկ, որ ում գարողագանության ավանապար մի են դասը դասնին կսան առարիրը ինչերը ապտեղված է։ And that's what I've been saying for a while now, that this most important strategic partner of the Republic of Armenia is the ASPR. Uh, more than any superpower. Sure, uh, our, uh, the diaspora doesn't have armies, uh, but uh, we are, we've seen that uh, the armies of uh, our strategic partners are not always very helpful, are they? Uh, let me just, you know, we can, uh, forgive me, Karnik, let me just say, what you're saying, we can, is what I'm uh, going in so many ways, but shut now, Darabanke, in, in, in the final analysis. So you're saying silence should not be deemed uh, as anything other than perhaps uh, uh, reflection uh, and, uh, uh, and action at any given moment. So I hope that it's not one that is a silence before the storm, and I hope that it doesn't become a storm, an internal storm, and I hope that we get uh, collectively as a nation our act together. Uh, thank you for your analysis. Go ahead, Karnik. I, I wanted to, um, to dig into that a little bit, um, Viken, because you know, I, I, when you said alienation, um, it, it uh, sent a chill down my spine because I, I do, you've spoken on issues of national consciousness and national understanding before, and I've, I've, I've followed a lot of those, the writings, the, the, the speeches on those points, which I find very intriguing. Um, and the reason why it sent a chill down my spine when you mentioned alienation is that for a nation to really have national consciousness, there have to be formative pillars, right? There, there are non-negotiables, right? And I do feel that up until not even during the war, up until the signing of the trilateral statement, the Armenian world shared formative pillars, non-negotiable pil pillars. Now, I understand the reality of geopolitics causes, you know, political changes and, and, uh, and decision making in the, in the short term. But one always has to have faith that those others that are that form part of their nation, whether they're leadership, institutions, uh, NGOs, what have you, that we all share the belief in those formative non-negotiable pillars. And I think that's what might be unsettling in this period of silence, let's say in the diaspora. Um, it might be unsettling in Artsakh. It might be unsettling uh, in the border, uh, the, the new border regions 
uh, in Armenia. But aren't we at risk of, is it, aren't too many of the non-negotiables appearing negotiable? Isn't that the issue here? Well, uh, I, I, listen, um, and again, each one of us has uh, uh, a level of tolerance, okay, as, as humans. We each tolerate something to a certain point. You may tolerate something more than I do and vice versa and so on. Uh, so at this point in time, I think the prevailing force in uh, sort of uh, uh, setting up the space for tolerance is uh, the war and the aftermath. Basically, everybody's saying that uh, we underwent a horrible defeat, okay? A lot of people are understanding why this happened because a lot of elements came together. And by this, I mean international events, uh, the fact that uh, Turkey and Azerbaijan uh, were definitely uh, had a lot of uh, a lot more resources and power than we did. And of course, some incompetence also on the ground, right? Uh, in Armenia and so on, leadership and so on. So we lost, we lost the war. We know this, but there's nothing wrong uh, by us acknowledging this defeat, coming to grips with it and finding the proper strategies in a defeated state uh, to promote our ideals. Listen, a lot of the countries now uh, that are considered very important powers, whether it's Japan or Germany and so on, uh, uh, had huge defeats, right, in their history. But they came around. How did they come around? Sure, uh, they had uh, some super powers, i.e. the US providing them economic uh, assistance and so, so on and so forth, but that's not enough. They had the willpower to come back and to learn from their mistakes and from their shortcomings. So it's only, it's only been a one year, Karnik, uh, from that horrendous defeat. Um, let's be reminded that Azerbaijan lived with, uh, with a defeat for 25 years. It took them 25 years to come back and wage a war. Now, I don't know, I hope to God that it's not gonna take us 25 years to rise up, uh, but uh, it's okay, it's fine. But don't assume that just because some things uh, uh, are perceived to be negotiable are truly being negotiated. They have been taken away from us, definitely, uh, by enemies of ours. And so, what, Pashinyan is gonna give, it, give away more territory? Well, Pashinyan is not gonna be the prime minister of Armenia for very, you know, for, for decades, right? Uh, things change, but I I don't even know if uh, Mr. Pashinyan at this point in time would be prepared to negotiate what we're calling non-negotiable. Uh, let's wait and see. Let's wait and see. A lot uh, remains to be seen. I know there's, that there's a lot of skepticism, uh, a lot of fear amongst people, but let's wait and see. Uh, and in the meantime, let's focus on bringing people together because as you talk about national identity and so on and so forth, uh, you know, uh, that much used and abused word of national unity uh, is very much uh, required right now. Uh, so uh, how that's going to be brought about, it's a challenge. Uh, 
uh, but uh, I think organizations and individuals uh, have to come together. If the Armenian state is not going to cause uh, that sort of um, <coughs> coming together, then organizations and individuals need to do that. Uh, and uh, they, they should come together and uh, form a pact. Uh, but that that's a matter of a different discussion, I see. Uh, I don't, uh, we're, we're coming up on an hour. Uh, I did want to ask you about your take on uh, CSTO uh, umbrella Armenian forces in uh, Kazakhstan. Is that a good political move? Uh, it, it's, I, I don't know what to make of it. Um, I wanted to ask you about you know, we had a, we had, a, as you said, a new year, Christmas, as I said it, you have Dagavin Menkulink, Hai Kerinev, Bakui Panderu Mech, you have Vanshush, Darinel Sharunat, Vidi Unenank, Zanolere, Volant, Vidi Aitselen, Yerapalu, Irans, Nahadak, Zavat Neru, Shirin Neru, Archer, Honarelu. Yes, Guzei, Lal, uh, Paregamagan gets what Chetsus at the Raz Ayastani ante, Minchevisk Adrbejana Shoraborazi, Ir Achtanagi Hamar, Arsahi Badi Razmin Tatskin, or Menk Zorku Argen Kainter, Hantrima, or Irens Nerkin Hartsane, I think, and make. Nazar Baevi Goma, Nerga Ishanotunere, Pachman Mechen, Ardakin Panergan, Ujergan Panergan, Ivanev, Menk, Harirat, Mer Rotsme, Hon Wargeng, Asiga Armevazem, Spes Anhankis Bahe. But Snayer Vidian Tunik Mekpa. Yet a Hayastana, CSTOE, Idi Antam Manar. Եվ բիդի ալլար, մանավանդ ռուսագան ժնշումներու դար, մանավանդ այս որ է ռուս որ դբավորությունը սայն է, որ այդ ռուսագան ժնշումը շատ հանքիստ ընդունելու ընտացքի մեջ ենք, ավանապար որովետև այդ բարդատրանքին տակ կսկան, որբես Եվ գամալ թուրս պիտի կան ուղագի, այդ կազմագեր ուտեն են, երբ այլ ընդրանք ունենան, գամ այն կամ մահզորը սկա Հայաստանի բետությունը, որ այդպիսի մեկ մարդահարավերի արջև կտնվի, այսօր, այս վիճագին մեջ հոնենք � ուն իրադես և լավադեսը սիր գարով, որով եդև ես լավադեսություն և իրադեսությունը ամբայման իրավոր հագատրվող հասկացողություններ չեմ համար։ Այսինքն լավադես կրնասլլալ ավակայի աշվում, բայց նաև իրադես այո այդ տղակը, որ զողվեցան, դերշավես հերոսներ են, որոնք իրենց գիանքով մեր հողը և մեր ասկը փորձեցին բաշպանել։ Եվ պարկանոնց 
հազար խոնարում անոնց զնողներում եւ հարազատներում որովհետեւ իրենք իրենց աշխին վրա գրեցին այն ինչ որ Իդի շարունակվի դեսեք մինչև այս օրը զբեղություն էր կան ամեն է ցայդուն օրինակ առնել Իսրայելը մինչև այս օր ինքը իր ամբողջականությունը պաշտպանելու իր աբահովությունը պաշտպանելու ընթացքի մեջ է շարունակապար գրանպագոսի բայքարի որով քիդե որ պետք է բայքարի որբեսի հարաբերի Եթե չի բայքարի, չի հարաբերվեր։ Մերնալ նույնն է, հիմա ինչ ունենք, ինգած ենք որպես երկիր, որպես բեդություն, այնպիսի աշխարակրական թիրքիմը մեջ, որ թշանիներով շրջապատված ենք, քետ մեկ կարևոր մասով, եւ դիդի բայքարին կա դուրցը։ Իրիշ երկ չի գա։ Հիմա գրնան գիսամիջոցներ որոնվի, ինչպես որ այս ներգա հայ Հայաստան, Թուրքիա հոսակցություններն են որպեսի մեղմվին այդ ճշնամությունները բայց քիչ առաջ նախապանի մեջ նախապանի մեջ կարնիգա անտրատարձավ եւ իր առաջին կամ երկրորդ արդյունն ալ այդ ուղությամբ էր երբսա որ անցյալի այս փորձերը որ եղած են հոսակցություններու երկու գողերու միջև հայկական գողմի եւ թրքական գողմի Աշուշ այս անգամ Հայաստանի եւ Թուրքիո միջև են հոսակցությունները ոչ թե Հայության եւ Թուրքերու միջև։ Անոր համար հայ թրքական հարաբերություններ կամ հայ թրքական խոսակցություններ, բանակցություններ դեռ չի գործ են ասում։ Ասիկա միան Հայաստան բեդության եւ Թուրքիո բեդության միջև խոսակցություններ են։ Բայց մեկ դար դարբեր մեկ փորձ չնշեցինք աստեղ որ 2001-ի գիշեք թարքն որ իսկ կապես որս եղավ հայ թրքական այսպես մերցերցման Turkish Armenian Commission-ը աստեղ զգեցավ իշեք եւ անդեղը ամենը վիրավորական բանը եւ այնադեմ ես արիթ ունեցած եմ խոսելու այդ մասին ամենը վիրավորական բան այն է որ ոչ թե միայն քերբեդություններ այլ նաև հայեր ընդունեցին որ ասիկա հայերու եւ թուրքերու միջեւ պետք է որ փարիթրացիության կամ մերցերցման պլատֆորմի վերածվի գարձեք թե թուրքերու թե մերգեցված է ջենետիկ բանը այսինքն հայ թուրքին է չի գրնար հարաբերիլ կամ կոյակցիլ եւ այլն եւ այլն այդպես եղած է չեն կոյակցած որովհետեւ թուրքիան եւ անոր իշխանությունները իր աճոց ավասիկ հայրավոր դարիները ի վեր հայության անդեպ ճշնամական գեցված կունեցած են չարտած են ուրեմն ասոր եդեվը ինչ որ դրանփանություն կա այնպես մի չէ որ հայ գծնի եւ առաջին օրեն թուրք գադե թուրքը չեն կընդունած կամ թրքական գեդությունը չեն կընդունած թրքական քաղաքականությունը չեն կընդունած որովհետև թրքական քաղաքականությունը ֆաշիզմի ֆրնադիրության հայադիացության արդահայտությունը եղած է ադոր համար չեն կընդունած ադոր համար թոնեզի որը մեկը չկա չփորձե հայ թուրք ինչ կա գիտնամ թրակ 2 մերցերցում եւ այլն նվակախումբ կերտա բարախումբ ու կա ասիկա անհետեթություն է այնտեղ կան քաղաքական խնդիրներ կան բահանջքներ որոնք հայություն ունի եթե երբեք որևէ մեկ է հետաքրքրված է հայության եւ թուրքի թուրքերու միջև ներսերսման բնականոնացման ողա այդ խնդիրներով սպաղին որոնք հիմքը գծարային անհամացայնություններուն եւ ճշնամանքին որոնք քաղաքական են որոնք ասկային են Thank you very much, 
for what has really been a very uh, lively discussion covering a number of subjects uh, that I think were pressing on the on the minds and hearts of our viewers. Uh, and you, have, in a very articulate uh, manner, have uh, have been able to flesh out some of those issues uh, and and really offer some perspectives that that are helpful moving forward. And I just wanted to thank you for your time. Uh, and uh, as always, we enjoy having you uh, on our program and enjoy these discussions on, on various issues. And the timing of this could not have been better. Thank you for thank it. You. And with that, I'd like to pass it on to Garo for his closing thoughts. Thank you, Karnik. Yes, uh, I want to wish everybody uh, uh, a productive year. Uh, it's only January 11th. There's 355 days, unless it's a leap year. I don't know if it is. Korzumink Menkanelu. I want to thank my friend, dear Dr. Viken Hosepian. I told her Korzeru Hamargor Dastam Yatner to Narazesku Korzum Gernerut Hep. I say, excuse me, I'm not a veteran. As we can see, mer ansial yeluit neru karnik im gochin. No im gocha. We didn't no im gocha. Yes, and then what about the champion there? Sir, this match, hokus match, matkis match. What can Al Baghdad allow me? Because I saw Majaragi head of Ankov. Yes, the snow at Betka. Այդ բարդավորությունը։ Կիտեք, ես կգաբի մեջ է երևան, երբ երևան երեկ երեկո էր։ Եվ մեկ է ինձի իսավ, կիտես այո բավերազ բգադարվի, այդ տեղը զոհեր ունեցանք, պայց, պայց ճաշարաններու մեջ այս պահուն Բայց ուրիշ դեղմը երևանի մեջ այս պահուն դագավին կոյություն ունի տպրոցմը, հայգագան տպրոցմը, կոյություն ունի պողոցմը, որու անունն է ռավի, 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 հագոպ մելիք հագոպյանի ձացգանունով ռավի։ Հոլորս կիտենք ռավին հոյագապ հայ միտք մեներ, որ իր կրությունների ընդ մեջ են վերշնչեց շադերում։ Եվ գյանքի գոչվեցավ իր աբումները պոլոր վետայիներով, սերոպախպիրով, կեղոտ չաղուշով, զորավոր անձանիտով։ Այս Հավիի դավիտ բեկ հազարութա� Կանի որ մենք ինքներս մեզ պարեգամ չենք, ով որ իր ասկը իր հայրենիկը չի սիրում իրավուկ չունի ոդարներից սեր բահանչելու։ Մեր թշվար վիճագը մենք ինքներս ենք ստեղծել մեզ համար։ Ուրիշ ոչ ոգ մեղավոր չէ։ Սավոք սրդի մենք ինքներս մեզ պարեգամ չենք։ Եգեք նախ պորձենք մենք ինքներս մեր հետ պարեգամ ըլլալ։ Ես կխորիմ անգե ետք և միայն այն ժամանակ է, որ մենք կրնանք հաչողություններ արձանակրել անգամը ե And we will see you all next Tuesday uh, on a new episode of Frontlines. Vikan Shachun Ragalim. Pariyere go.